Dying Light 2 is something we've actively been anticipating here at Game Ranks. We've mentioned it in lots of videos, and although we still don't know too much about what's going on with it or when it's coming out, it's at the top of our hype list. But some folks have asked us, you know, why so excited? Well, it's because the original Dying Light was pretty great. Today, we just want to take a quick look back and talk about why Dying Light was such a big deal. Now, I want to start with a little context because I think Dying Light was primed for success before release. In the year and months leading up to launch though, myself and some other folks that we knew uh, didn't have the highest expectations. Yes, it was dubbed kind of like that zombie game with parkour, which sounds cool and it was a bit exciting, but it just felt like it was in a sea of zombie games and we had already had the Dead Island first person zombie games and those were, you know, okay, I guess, but Dying Light released on January 27th, 2015 on PC, PS4 and Xbox One and it completely blew expectations out of the water. You know, as an interesting hybrid of first person melee game where you kill zombies mixed with some RPG elements and questing with a dash of Mirror's Edge parkour in a near post-apocalyptic setting, this thing really seemed to be the perfect storm mixture for just a great game. In it, you're dumped into a massive quarantine section of the city of Haran. Actually, you literally parachute into it. It's been closed off though because of, you know, you guessed it, a viral outbreak that nobody knows where it came from and of course it's turning everybody into zombies. You play as an agent of a global relief organization named Kyle Crane who enters this quarantine zone with a mission directive that's more corporate political espionage than just save everyone in this place from the zombies. So that's where his conflict comes in and it evolves. Crane is voiced by the very excellent Roger Craig Smith, who we recently mentioned being awesome in Arkham Origins as Batman, among many other things, and hey, he nails it here too with what he's given. Story-wise, it's all okay. You know, there are some characters that come and go, and there are some twists and turns for a battle for a zombie outbreak cure research, but the real star of the show is the gameplay, dude. So. Techland, the developers behind this, were actually behind the original Dead Island game. Yeah, I, I know, I kind of buried the lead there, but yeah. Uh, after Dead Island, they realized that what they wanted to do next was such a departure that they decided to go off on their own and make this with a different publisher. Dying Light is primarily action and melee based. You can swing at zombies you encounter and as you progress you earn different abilities and moves like a stronger kick to keep them at bay, stuff like that. And there's a decent level of gore and feedback with weapons that you actually craft, but it's not really the star of the show. And nicely enough, uh, not a ton of guns. When you occasionally pick one up, it does feel significant and important. Now, more often than not though, it's about crowd control and just really avoidance. You're dodging zombies way more often than anything, partially because your weapons are breakable and you can get killed pretty easily. The avoidance of the zombies gets really fun though, thanks to the game's parkour focus that I mentioned. You know, you run, you jump, you grab, and climb your way through the rooftops of the city, and it's Basically like, yeah, Mirror's Edge mixed with the good old days of Assassin's Creed when the parkour was really emphasized and key. Sure, yes, here it's first person, so it can be a little clunky here and there, but overall it was incredibly satisfying with a good sense of speed and momentum. Couple this with the fact that the game just had a really good way of giving off a sense of scale and height. You know, at times you actually feel like you're up pretty high in a way more convincing manner than other first person games in this genre. It just felt special. Don't really know how they nailed it, but climbing up on a bridge or a high skyscraper in this game with the sound design and the wind and the sway of the camera, it just really was convincing and unique. And you know, you get to know the ins and outs of Haran and the multiple districts that all were pretty varied, but you know, the scaffolding, the walkways, the alleyways with paths to the rooftop, shortcuts, you kind of play the floor as lava as you make your way back and forth. And you know, you get your own preferred memorized paths. This is partially thanks to a lot of the quests given to you just being fetch quests. You know, run here, kill this, grab this, run back. You know, it's okay though, it worked for what it was. And getting to know the place and then even getting introduced to new areas and getting to learn those as the game goes on was just a good experience. Especially with the day and night stuff, Whew, man. So like at night you can engage in quests and mess around with the world, but you can't see as well, it's pitch black. And there are faster, more dangerous zombies that are like hybrids that can kill you 
very quickly. They're roaming around hunting for you. Messing around at night is mostly optional, but you can get more XP and stuff to your benefit if, if you want to try your luck out there. Not to mention the fact that it was legit pretty scary. The game in this setting has a great level of tension, and some of the moments in the game where you're running for your life as the sun is quickly setting, just trying to get back to your home base, mm, oh man, that's just such a good horror feeling here. And I mean, the game only got better as it went on thanks to some good progression, the shakeup of enemy types, both zombie and human, which was interesting to see first when the game launched, just how much human encounters there were. It, it was cool to just kind of see this like just newly post-apocalyptic society where quick factions are starting to cobble themselves together and you have to pretty much kill them all. But you're introduced to these types and these encounters at uh, the progression and learning new perks and abilities and getting access to cooler game-changing stuff like a grappling hook later on just made it to all be paced extremely well. So in terms of raw gameplay fun, Dying Light was like an awesome turn off your brain, kill some zombies, get some loot, do some quests, craft some thing type of fun from beginning to end. It was pretty chock full as far as game experiences go. Now by May 2015, 4.5 million players had played this game. It sold 5 million units by August, and it debuted at number one on US software sales charts. It also, interestingly enough, has the highest selling first month of sales for a new survival horror IP, beating out the other big guns at the time like Evil Within. And more than 17 million players have played this thing as of December 2019. So thanks to, I guess it's success, Techland continued to support it for an astonishingly long time, building on the cooperative element that was pretty simple at launch, adding more quarantine zones and some competitive mode stuff. And then in February of 2016, we got the following. This was like a bigger expansion that had a new campaign. You get access to a brand new map that was a bit more open. You actually had a, like a dune buggy to drive around in, like full on vehicle mechanics. Something that really wouldn't have been possible on the tighter city streets of the original map. You get a brand new story, there's new enemies, uh, there's like a new cult out there. This was like almost a new full on game with a big map, a real full story, new weapons, new enemies, and people were just generally really into it, us included. If you remember, it was actually one of the earliest before you buy videos I've done. And the following really is the closest we've gotten to a Dying Light sequel before Dying Light 2 was inevitably announced. Now, I kid you not though, this game got additions and support and all kinds of weird stuff sporadically all the way up until 2020. Yeah, this primarily single player action adventure game from 2015 just kept going in a way we hadn't really seen before. One of the more recent big things, August 13th, 2020, we got Hell Raid. This was like a game that Techland was working on that was delayed indefinitely and then pretty much kind of canceled. They must have put a good amount of work into it because they instead released it as an expansion for Dying Light. It's kind of like Vermintide, where like you're using melee combat to take on hordes of enemies. Players weren't like super crazy about it or anything. A lot of them saying it felt kind of unfinished. Yeah, but like the setup is cool at least. You find an old arcade cabinet in the basement of the tower and it's Hell Raid. So it was more content. They gave it to players. Your $60 that you spent if you bought the game at launch for full price went a really freaking long way. Way longer than anyone expected. And this of course leads us to Dying Light 2, man. All the stuff I just talked about is why we're so excited for it. Dying Light 2 looks to really expand upon some of the storytelling and RPG concepts that we got in the first game, really blowing things out in terms of storytelling choices. One of the earliest things they have highlighted is just how your decisions in the world of Dying Light 2 affect the actual world and society around you. This is taking place later in the disaster, so new societies are completely built up, new communities are forming, adjusting to this new zombie life. And it seems cool from the writers involved to just the creativity and freedom on display, we think it has a lot of potential. And if it's as fun as the original Dying Light, at the very least, we still think that's a win. Now, the game has been in the works for quite some time and delayed quite a bit, and also some people have left the project, but Dying Light has confirmed that it is not in development hell, they just probably announced it a little bit too early, and we're expecting to hear a lot more news from it very soon. So from a lot of angles, from the gameplay to the new stuff to the support that this game could potentially get, if it's anything like the first game, Dying Light 2 could be 
kick ass. But again, like I said, we just really wanted to talk about why we thought Dying Light was a big deal, or at least it was to us. So this now, of course, flips over to you guys. We want to hear from you in the comments. If you played the original Dying Light, do you have fond memories of it? Do you think that we should relax? It's not as good as you think. Do you think we're underselling it, overselling it? We want to hear from you. And we also want to hear what you'd like to see in Dying Light 2. Also, I got to say too, thanks for watching this. And if you enjoyed this video, a little trip down memory lane from a 2015 game, clicking the like button is the best way you can really help us out. Genuinely, it helps. So thank you. But if you're new around here, maybe consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But hey, either way, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.